Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone uh, for this talk. Um, so before I start, uh, I just want to make this session like more interactive. So uh, along the way, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, to like shout it out or like put it into the Zoom chat. Um, I will take a look at the Zoom chat from time to time um, and then to answer your questions. Okay, so so feel free to asking any questions and uh, anything uh, while I'm presenting. Okay, so let's look at today's agenda. So first, I will very briefly introduce uh, what is AI, and then after that, I will show a live demo uh, on using uh, deep learning uh, technology. Okay, then after that, I will um, provide a few uh, AI case study. Uh, mainly like in utilizing deep learning technology. Uh, then at the end, I, I will summarize by um, emphasize on the relationship between AI uh, and data. Okay, um, so what is AI? Uh, you probably hear uh, AI like everywhere. Um, so AI is so-called artificial intelligence. So this is the official definition of AI, uh, which is uh, the effort to automate intellectual tasks uh, normally performed by human. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about you, but for me, like first time I look at this definition, I feel it's like a invalid definition. Like after I reading this sentence, I still don't know what is AI, right? So basically it is saying, um, so in the past, before we have computer or machines, like only human being can perform those intelligent tasks. Um, then later while we have computer machines, then we think maybe we can let a uh, machine to, to do something uh, previously only human can do. So that is a very, very general idea. Um, and because of that, AI is also a very, very general field. So there are a lot of technology uh, which uh, are in the uh, AI area, okay? Um, if you look at the this diagram, um, so, so AI is a, is a, is a very general uh, field. Uh, it has many, many technologies, uh, it also including uh, machine learning and deep learning. And the reason uh, AI becomes so popular recently, uh, it is because machine learning uh, and deep learning. Okay, so uh, let me explain why uh, through some like a brief uh, uh, introduction on, on the history of AI. And then you can understand why uh, recently uh, AI becomes so popular again. So AI uh, is not a new concept. Uh, it was first uh, proposed uh, in around like see, uh, yeah, okay. It 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 was first proposed at around 1950s. So that is sounds like very very long time ago. Um, but in the early stage of AI, people are focusing on symbolic AI. So basically, uh, um, we try to develop uh, some uh, expert systems, okay? Uh, and those expert systems can do some intelligent tasks, uh, which can previously can only be performed by humans. So what is expert system? Okay, this sounds like a very complex terminology, but I'm sure you have been using it um, like in your real life. So I'm, I'm sure uh, you have the experience uh, to call a bank then or a mobile phone company or any uh, similar companies. Then when you get through uh, the phone call, then you hear those recorded voicing uh, press one for let's say personal banking, press two for investment banking, press three for uh, co uh, sorry corporate banking or something like that. Then you have to press one or two. Uh, and then there is another recording, uh, basically saying something uh, like if you want the loan service, press which uh, button, if you want the uh, some other service provide, uh, then press which button. And so we all feel like very frustrated, okay? We are feel like very frustrated uh, to like hearing those voice. But this is actually a typical uh, expert system, okay? 
Um, so, so this expert system has certain features. Um, so first, uh, it uh, it will have hard coded rules. Okay. And so uh, the rules are hard coded. So they will always ask you to press one for personal events. Okay, this is hard coding. Um, then uh, they will use the uh, classical programming uh, to implement those hard coded rules in some computer, some server. Okay, so when you call the bank, then they will direct you to that computer. Then they feel this. Uh, they they follow. Uh, they let you follow the instruction uh, through these hard coded rules. Okay, then hopefully. Uh, eventually you can get your answer. So this uh, is a typical um, expert system and it is also the early AI system. Um, it is useful in some extent like uh, because machine can operate 24 seven, right? If you have a human operator, you probably cannot uh, afford to do it 24 seven. But if you are using a machine, you can let it run 24 seven. Uh, but the problem is uh, it is not a very intelligent system, right? You have to let the customer follow certain rules that sometimes, uh, and the rules are hard coded, uh, then sometimes we become very, very frustrated. Okay, and so that's an example uh, about an uh, expert system. Then this is a very good example of the early AI uh, development. I, I want to uh, show you another example. Um, so uh, besides those uh, kind of like uh, uh, phone uh, banking system, um, expert system has been applied very well and successful in medical uh, system. Uh, because uh, to in the healthcare sector, uh, while you try to diagnose a disease and etc., uh, there seems to have some like fixed uh, set of rules. Okay, and so. Uh, this diagram gives an example uh, how to build an expert system uh, to diagnose uh, diabetes. Okay, so first uh, to diagnose whether a person has a diabetes, we need to look at the patient's situation, uh, their symptoms, their uh, some effective factors, and we need to let the patient do certain tests. Okay, and based on those informations, um, we'll feed in those information to the expert system. Then expert system will follow the hard coded rules and then they will decide whether this patient has diabetes or not. Who decide these rules? So, the, so these rules are decided by the doctors, by the, the real doctors. Okay, so before you design this expert system, normally you need to uh, interview uh, the doctors, then collect the information, then ask them normally how they diagnose whether a person has diabetes or not. Okay, then, uh, then the, the doctor gives all the suggestion um, on how to set the rules, and uh, then the uh, computer people will basically hard code all the rules following a doctor's advice then build this expert system. Then we can use this expert system to decide uh, whether, um, whether a patient has diabetes or not. So for the expert system, uh, it's very important that uh, you get the information from the expert. Okay, you get all the rules from the expert. Then you will cut code all the rules uh, based on the expert's uh, advice. So there is pros and cons. The pros is like the, this system is very transparent. You know exactly how this system is making decision. Okay, the disadvantage is also very obvious. It is a very rigid system. Every time you want to change it, okay, let's see, uh, instead of uh, want to check uh, whether the person has diabetes or not, okay, yes or no. Um, I want to check whether the system has like, uh, sorry, whether the patient has type A, type B or type C uh, or no, because diabetes have different types, right? If I want to check whether the patient have different types of diabetes, I basically need to interview the, the expert again, the doctor again, okay? Then redesign the whole diagram, then reprogramming the whole system because the rules are hard coded. Any small change you make, you have to redo everything. 
Okay, so that make the expert system um, not very popular. Okay, so that's why um, uh, the we all we we. We all have the impression the artificial intelligence system and um, is is always artificial intelligence. Okay, they're not very intelligent. Okay, so like before before 1990s at least, um, because at that time most of the uh, AI system is actually uh, focusing on symbolic AI approach. Okay, we basically use using those. Um, sorry. We're basically using those uh, expert um, information, then hard code them uh, using classical programming, then come out the answer. So that's the early stage of uh, AI development. Okay, then let's uh, fast forward to 1990s. Okay, so that is a time um, people start to utilizing machine learning to develop uh, some like real uh, intelligent system and machine learning uh, really changed the way uh, people develop AI system. So I'm using a similar example. Uh, let's say you want to develop uh, a system to diagnose whether a patient has diabetes or not. Okay, so instead of using a symbolic AI expert system approach, uh, this time I uh, will be using a machine learning approach. Okay, then uh, how to solve this problem? Uh, first, you will collect a set of data. Okay, so this part you still need to ask some um, uh, advice from the expert, like the doctors. Okay, then you ask doctors what kind of features are important to diagnose whether a patient has diabetes or not. Okay, then doctor may suggest you, you need to check their, whether they are, um, pregnant or not, their glucose, their blood pressure, and etc. You need to check all those uh, features. Then you collect the data uh, of all the patient um, with all those features. And most importantly, uh, you need to label. You need to label the patient whether they have diabetes or not. So yes means they have diabetes. No means they do not have diabetes. Okay, so after you get this data, okay, you can just feed this data uh, into a machine learning model. And then we will use this data to train uh, a machine learning model. So there are many different kinds of machine learning models. So in this slides, I provide an example. Uh, we trained a decision tree model. Okay, so this is a decision tree model. Uh, we trained utilizing uh, the data here. Okay, so if we look at this decision tree model, what is it seeing is first uh, you need to check the glucose of the patient. Okay, if the patient's glucose is smaller or equals to one, two, three, then you check the BMI. Okay, if the BMI is smaller than 26.6, uh, then um, uh, it's very unlikely the patient uh, has diabetes. Okay, if, if the patient's glucose is actually larger than 123, then you go to another branch. Okay, then you check the uh, BMA um, and then glucose, then in the end you may end uh, at this node, then you will see uh, this patient indeed uh, is likely to have diabetes. So this is a typical decision tree model. Okay, so uh, I want to emphasize the rules here. First, we check the glucose, uh, uh, whether it's smaller than 123 or bigger than 123, this threshold numbers and all those rules um, is not set by any doctors, is not set by any expert, okay? It is purely learned uh, from data, okay? So everything uh, is learned from data, from the historical record. Um, so this data, each line is a patient's record, whether they have 
um, diabetes or not, and uh, their corresponding different features. Okay, so, so that's the difference uh, between the early AI and, and the machine learning stage. Uh, in the symbolic AI stage, everything is to be hard coded. Um, but in the machine learning uh, stage, uh, you do not need to um, hard code any rules. The rules are learned from data. And later, if you want to um, develop a model or a system um, to diagnose something more complex, right? You, um, you want to, this time you want to diagnose whether the patient has like type A, type B, type C diabetes. Uh, what you need to do, uh, you need to collect a new data set. Okay, in this new data set, um, the target column or the outcome column, the label, you need to label patient whether they have, uh, whether they have type, sorry, whether they have type A uh, diabetes, uh, type B, uh, et cetera. And the other features uh, can be exactly the same. Um, you can also add in new features, um, but as long as you have the record uh, of patients with different types uh, of diabetes, then you should uh, be able to utilize that uh, to train a new decision tree model or any other machine learning model, uh, which basically can help you to diagnose whether a patient uh, has diabetes or not. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, then I will continue to the next stage. Um, so uh, since the machine learning stage, then AI becomes um, um, popular, okay, it becomes popular, then a lot of technology company uh, are utilizing machine learning algorithm uh, in their operation, like uh, Google, Netflix, Amazon, et cetera. But what brings AI to, the, to our everyday life? Uh, it is uh, the so-called uh, deep learning technology. Okay, so deep learning technology uh, become very, very popular uh, since uh, 2010 uh, till now, it is still very popular. Um, and the reason uh, deep learning uh, technology becomes so popular because it cannot only, it, it is able to solve not only business problem uh, or med medical problem, it can solve some uh, real life problem. Let's say recognize a face in an image, um, detect whether there is a car in the image, and etc. So deep learning technology uh, basically can solve some very impressive image problem and uh, natural language problem. So that um, makes deep learning technology um, being applied uh, almost in our uh, daily life. Okay, so that basically bring the AI um, to the height. Okay, so what is deep learning? Um, so just now uh, we explained the machine learning, um, but for machine learning model, there are many different machine learning models, like the simple one linear regression model, decision tree, I show it here, uh, neural networks. Something wrong with my okay. neural networks. Um, and also um, support vector machine, and et cetera, random forest. You may hear many different uh, types of uh, um, machine learning models. Um, so before, uh, before 2010, like people uh, try to use uh, different um, machine learning models to solve different problems, there isn't a clear winner, okay? But after uh, 2000, 10, 2012 uh, image net competition. I, I will, uh, I will uh, explain that in details later. After uh, 2000, 
health, uh, image net competition, and uh, neural network uh, become uh, a clear winner. Okay, so this is a neural network. This is a neural network. So you may hear about neural network model. Basically, neural network model has different layers uh, that they can take in the information and to, to, to pass the input uh, into different layers and then transform the data into different representation. Then after many layers, and then the neural network model basically can give you the answer you want. Okay, that's a, that's a general uh, summary of how a neural network model is functioning. Uh, so why neural network a model uh, um, become a clear winner compared to the other machine learning model. Um, because before uh, 2012, uh, when we are solving some like image tasks, so let's see uh, in this problem, where we try to uh, identify whether there is a car in this image. Okay, normally we will, um, we will uh, let some human to extract the important features from this image. Okay, um, so this person may extract, let's see, uh, number of um, number of circles inside uh, this image. Okay, uh, number of uh, squares uh, inside this image, uh, zero, etc. So uh, some human will try to extract. Uh, some information from the image, okay? And then uh, we pass the extracted information, okay, a table or something uh, into the uh, machine learning model, okay? It can be a decision tree model, can be a neural network model as well, can be a random forest, any other neural network, uh, sorry, machine learning model. Then the model uh, will come out output to see whether there is a car or not uh, inside this image. Okay, but deep learning model uh, is doing it uh, in a different way. Okay, so we will not allow a human to extract uh, information from the image. We will feed the image directly uh, into neural network model. And because neural network model has many, many different layers. Okay, so first a few layers uh, will be able to extract important information from the image. Okay, then the next few layers will be able to uh, do classification uh, or prediction. And basically, uh, they will uh, tell you uh, whether there is a car or not uh, inside this image. Okay, so that is the, uh, that is the, the biggest difference uh, between machine learning model and deep learning models. Uh, so deep learning model uh, let the neural network to identify the important features, okay, instead of uh, to let human uh, to craft some features. And after doing this, um, people find um, we can achieve very high accuracy, uh, especially uh, in image classification tasks. Okay, so uh, here is also an example. Uh, let's say we um, build an image classifier trying to recognize whether there is a cat or a dog inside an image. Uh, so first we need to collect many pictures of cats and dogs. Okay, then we use that image to train the layered neural network model. Then after that, uh, we can um, randomly find an image online, then we feed the image into the uh, neural network model then the model will be able to tell us whether uh, there is a cat or, or dog uh, inside the image. Okay, and um, so I think now is a good time. Uh, I, I uh, show you a, a quick demo. Uh, normally how uh, can we uh, build a neural network model and use the neural ne network model uh, to do the classification. Okay, uh, so in, in this demo, um, I will try to classify different food image. So you can see here, um, I have collected um, many uh, food image uh, for this like 10 different kinds of food. Okay, if look, let's say I look at the fried rice and then you can see these are all the 
images of fried rice. Um, so each folder has around, uh, has 750 images. Okay, so for 10 folders, um, I have a total of 7,500 uh, food images. Um, I will use uh, those 7,500 images uh, to uh, train my deep learning model uh, and build a deep learning uh, image classifier to differentiate different uh, food image. Okay, so uh, we do this uh, using uh, Python. Uh, we, uh, to be specific, we use TensorFlow and Keras. Uh, so nowadays, uh, because there are a lot of open source uh, Python package, so you can actually build your deep learning model using a few line of code very easily. So first we need to load all the, all the images uh, in, the, in this uh, folder. Okay, and then we can uh, start to build the model. And so as I mentioned to you, neural network model normally have different layers. Um, so this first layer, I use VGG16. VGG16 is a pre-trained uh, image classification model. So this model is trained um, uh, around I think 1.5 million images. It is pre-trained, okay? I can just use it as one layer in my model. Then I add in some other uh, simple layers uh, and I will, so I don't need to train this uh, pre-trained model. I will just train some simple layers and uh, to let this um, deep learning model just to classify different uh, food image. Um, I will I will now run this cell. So this cell basically is doing the training. Uh, I will train the model for 30 iterations. Uh, so each iteration, uh, I will use that 7,500 image uh, to train the model, update the model parameters, weights, and etc. Uh, so for each iteration, it takes around one minute uh, to train the model. So for 30 iterations, it takes around 30 minutes. Okay, I run this, uh, I pre-run this. Um, so after that, uh, you should have a reasonable model, uh, which can achieve around 70% uh, of uh, validation accuracy or testing accuracy. Okay, uh, so now I will show you um, um, how to use the model to, um, to make classification on different food image. Okay, so this is a fried rice uh, image I downloaded uh, from internet. So this is a very typical fried rice. So you can see uh, it is uh, return 99% uh, um, of prediction uh, classification, uh, basically percentage. So the model, basically this model is 99% sure uh, this image uh, is uh, fried rice, okay? Um, for, for some other image, the model may not be that confident. So let's see, let me try this crab cake. Uh, so you can see for this crab cake, uh, model is only 54% uh, uh, confident uh, this image is a crab cake and 33% uh, confident it is a uh, falafel. I think because these two are full image are quite uh, similar to each other. So you can see the model output is normally the percentage uh, of co the confidence, the model think uh, what kind of image this, this image is, uh, because we only train it using these 10 different uh, kinds of food image. Okay, so the model will only um, provide a prediction uh, on, with the percentage value uh, for each different kind of food. Okay, and all those percentage will sum up uh, into one, that means 100%. And just now it is very uh, confident on the, the fried rice image. Um, but for the crab cake, uh, it is not uh, that confident. So for certain image, uh, it is um, 
it is more challenging uh, than um, the others. Okay, uh, you guys want to uh, want me to do a to find an image online. Um, then we can basically see whether this model works or not. Um, you want to choose a food uh, from these 10 uh, different categories, or you can choose any food which is not in this category. Then let's see how it uh, looks. Anybody has any uh, food in mind? Okay, May said, uh, May we will vote for carrot cake. Okay, sure, sure. Okay, let me see. Uh, so let's um, do carrot cake. Oh, okay. Um, so all those are carrot cake. So let's uh, find a challenging one. So uh, I think this one will be challenging because normally when we look at carrot cake, it's a slice, right? So let's say if I, <coughs> okay. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> let's say if I go with this one. <coughs> okay, let me save the image. Previously, I have a carrot cake, and um, so this is a uh, carrot cake too. Okay. Okay, let's see how it goes. Oh, this is, um, so the model still uh, managed to identify the, this cake as a carrot cake, uh, but it is a bit confused between carrot cake and uh, chocolate mousse, okay? Uh, so let's look at chocolate mousse. Yeah, so, um, but why? Uh, oh, I think because of the, uh, the, this cake has those like brown color thing. Yeah, so that um, makes the model a bit confused, uh, but it still uh, managed to uh, predict this is a carrot cake. Okay, uh, so so that's, that's the demo uh, I want to show you. Basically, uh, just uh, basically the, the idea is to show you uh, uh, nowadays with the uh, Python uh, package, now we can easily uh, implement a deep learning model uh, and use the model to do some simple like image classification task. Um, so for you, like if you're not interested in full image, you may be interested in other kinds of image, right? Or something uh, like your company are interested, then you can collect the 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 image let's say your company produce some product you can collect those image and do some uh, predictions see whether the product is in good uh, quality or uh, not in a very good shape etc okay so that's the uh, that's the that's a demo um i hope through the demo you understand uh, you have a better understanding now on deep learning and technology. Okay, uh, then now uh, we uh, move to the next slides. Um, then you may ask why now, right? And so just now we look at the history of AI. Uh, it's been like, AI is not something new, but why uh, now it becomes so popular? Um, so basically uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, uh, it is because only now uh, we have uh, big data. We have the data um, available to train the deep learning model. Uh, we have the computing power. Okay, just now like when I train such a small model, it takes 
uh, one minute for it, each iteration. So it takes around 30 minutes for me to finish training that model. Uh, and all the researchers has been uh, trying to improve the algorithm uh, like for so many years. Okay, so uh, it's only now or we have all these three elements in place at the same time. Uh, and also I want to emphasize uh, data is really critical uh, to AI breakthrough. So uh, just now the, um, the image classification model we use is using this convolutional neural network algorithm. But this algorithm uh, was first uh, developed in 1989. Okay, at that time, people already using this algorithm to uh, do some simple image classification on some like handwritten DG, et cetera. But this technology become uh, commercialized and to let everybody can use uh, until uh, around like 2014. Because uh, only at around 2010, and this famous image net project. Okay, some researchers from Stanford University, they collect 1.5 million label image. Okay, and those image belongs to 1000 different categories, like some vehicles, some animals, and some uh, plants and, and a lot of different things. Okay, and they, make, they made it open source. Okay, so everybody can access it. And uh, then they organize the uh, image net competition. So to let the researchers or, or the, anybody who interested in the image classification task to join this uh, competition, to design their own algorithm, to do the image classification, uh, and then uh, see what is the uh, accuracy they can achieve. Then on 2012, uh, a group of researchers, um, they use a convolutional neural network model. Okay, um, and they train it on these 1.5 million uh, images that uh, they achieved very, very high. They improved the accuracy a lot because in the past, people all using machine learning technique. They use a uh, human craft, uh, they let human to uh, uh, craft the features and then using machine learning model uh, to do classification. Um, but on that year, 2012, uh, some a group of uh, researchers, they just directly feed all the images into ConfNets, convolutional neural networks. Then they, I think they managed to improve the accuracy by around like 10% or something. Okay, so that is a time people realize um, we have been doing it all uh, wrongly in the past. Okay, we thought we should handcraft the feature, then let machine learning model to, um, to to make prediction, uh, it is all wrong. We should just feed the image uh, into the conf uh, neural networks then train the neural networks directly. Then we can achieve very high accuracy. But why people only realize this uh, in 2010, because that is a time you have a big data set, 1.5 million labeled images. Okay, before that, uh, at the time this algorithm being first proposed, the 1990s, even like, I think internet probably just uh, been in, like started. Okay, so at that time, it's very difficult to collect images. You may have like a few hundred image maximum, okay, to, to train the model. So, so people don't realize, didn't realize how powerful this convolutional neural network is until uh, the, the image, the data set is available. Then people can use the image to train the model. Then that model really uh, become very powerful. So this is what we want to emphasize. Data is really critical um, to AI breakthrough. Uh, so in this, uh, for this specific example, uh, from the time the this algorithm being developed till the final breakthrough, uh, it takes around uh, 25 years, okay? But from the time the data being uh, collected, it only takes four years to this AI breakthrough, okay? Um, there are also many other AI breakthroughs 
So Lincoln Laboratory actually did this analysis. So in average, it takes around 18 years from the time the algorithm being developed till the breakthrough. But once you have data, it only takes around uh, three years. Okay, so, uh, so although AI, uh, AI is an area we focusing on study the algorithms, and the models, and etc. cetera. Um, but data is very important for us, especially after the machine learning and deep learning stage. Um, without data, we cannot get very uh, useful and very meaningful models. OK, uh, yeah, I already did the demo. So here, let me quickly show you some uh, case study. Uh, so the first one uh, is from Domino Pizza. Um, so they they so the problem they are having is sometimes when they deliver pizza to their customer, then the customer always complain that pizza is not in good position. Um, so they have a lot of unhappy customers, etc. Uh, so how to solve this problem? Uh, Domino Pizza utilize the deep learning uh, uh, model. So they will inspect the pizza quality um, before they deliver pizza uh, to the customer. So what they do is, uh, as uh, the moment the pizza leaves the, uh, the oven, and they will take a picture of the pizza. Okay, um, then then they then they will use the deep learning model to inspect whether the pizza is in good quality uh, or not. So you think about it. This is a typical. Um, classification problem, image classification problem. And so if the pizza is like this, uh, every ingredient is like on top of it, then maybe this is a good quality pizza. Okay. Um, however, uh, if the pizza is like, uh, you've got something here, something there, then the pizza ingredient drop all over the place, this may be a bad uh, quality pizza. Okay, so uh, in the first place, uh, Domino uh, needs to collect those pizza images because they deliver many pizzas every day. So they just take, take pictures of all those pizzas. Um, and if, if the customer didn't complain, then that means the, the pizza is okay. But if some customer complain, then that means that pizza is not in good uh, position. They will label it bad. Okay, then they use those image they collected, let's say in the past three months, and they train a deep learning model. Then that model will be able to identify a good pizza and bad pizza. <coughs> the pizza not in good position. Okay, then they deploy it uh, in the camera um, on top of their oven. So each time when there is a <coughs> pizza come out, they take a picture, then they feed the image into the model. Then the model can tell <coughs> whether the uh, pizza is in good uh, quality or not. And if it is not in good uh, quality, then they will um, raise some warning uh, and some, some human intervention uh, will come in. So that's the idea uh, of this uh, PISA checker, <coughs> sorry, um, case study. Okay, so it, you don't need to have a human to uh, stand there to inspect the PISA 24, uh, like all the time. You can just uh, install a camera and now this, uh, thanks to the edge computing, um, those cameras, you can also uh, incorporate some computing unit to like doing the, to deploy the deep learning model together with a camera. Then you can uh, do the uh, computation, then come out the notification and warning, et cetera. Okay, so uh, that's the PISA uh, case study. <clears throat> uh, another one is regarding to the, the, farming. And so this John Deere, it's a um, American company. They actually produce those like facility for the farming um, industry. Um, so um, in farming, we know there is, uh, they always have the problem with uh, the pests. 
okay, the pests will like uh, affect the crops, then the crops cannot grow properly. So ne they need to spread um, a lot of uh, pesticide chemicals uh, on the crops and so that the crops can grow up properly. Um, but if we uh, spread a lot of pesticide chemicals, the problem is uh, it's not good for the environment uh, and it is not good for human as well. Okay, uh, so John Deere uh, think about it and then they also use the computer vision technique to help them. And they collect a lot of pictures uh, of different uh, crops um, at the farmland. Um, so some uh, some part of um, crops, they maybe they are in good quality. Okay, there's no pests. Uh, some part uh, maybe maybe this this part. Okay, uh, it is uh, is affected by the by pests. Okay, um, so they use uh, those image to train the model, and then the model uh, are able to identify the crops uh, which is affected by the pests. Uh, then they will only spray. Okay, they will only spray the chemicals uh, on those uh, crops which are affected by the pests. So in that case, they minimize the spray of the chemicals and they save environment and also minimize the damage for human being as well. Okay, so that's um, how to utilize those computer vision technology, the deep learning model uh, into farming. And the last one, uh, I think everybody probably heard about it already. Uh, it's in healthcare. <laughs> Um, so uh, in hospital, uh, sometimes uh, we need to do scans, x-rays, and other like image related medical tests. Um, like many times like, after we, we do those tests, uh, those tests actually can be done very fast nowadays, um, but it is the, the bottleneck is they need the technician to interpret the scan. Okay, um, so normally we can do the test very fast, five to 10 minutes, but we may need to wait two hours or four hours uh, for, the, for the lab results because um, there are so many scans and there are only a very limited number of technicians available to interpret the scans. Okay, uh, so that's why people think about using machine learning model um, to to actually to uh, kind of interpret the scans. Um, because you, if you think about those scans, which is actually um, uh, just an image. Um, and but you need to uh, interpret, uh, you need to label a lot of image. So let's say I want to uh, use AI to detect whether there is a tumor or not uh, inside a scan. Okay, then you need to label, for example, <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm doing it correctly. So those are the image uh, which do not have tumor. Okay, then you have some <laughs> other image. And then, so this part you need to consult the doctor and technician, the experts. And then they said those are the image which actually uh, has tumor. Okay, then you collect a lot of uh, those images. Um, then you train the model. Then next time you just uh, input uh, an image to the model, then the model can tell whether it has a tumor or not. Um, I, I just want to uh, mention like uh, from technical perspective, this is almost like a soft problem. Okay, a lot of technology company, um, they actually uh, uh, have uh, some like very high accuracy position, uh, solution. Uh, we, they can do the, um, tumor detection or cancer detection uh, with even higher accuracy than the real human uh, technicians. Uh, but now the, the question is how to deploy this system in a real hospital? Um, because a uh, hospital, especially the healthcare sector, it's not like, um, we cannot just uh, tell the patient uh, the AI said uh, you have a tumor, right? And the, the patient probably won't accept uh, this diagnosis. So, um, so uh, now I think a lot of people are trying to work like how to collaborate with uh, um, the hospital, uh, how to let the uh, AI be an assistant, okay? 
uh, AI uh, acting like an assistant for the human technicians. So the technicians can maybe can do uh, more scans uh, like in a very short time, uh, more efficiently, um, but there is still a human uh, to make the final decision. And so that's the that's a challenge. Uh, actually, that's a challenge nowadays for most of industry uh, when they want to apply AI. So a lot of uh, um, the technology development uh, is already mature, uh, especially for image tasks. Uh, as I show you just now, the a simple image classification, you can do it in a few line of codes. So the technology is there, it's already mature. The question is how uh, we can apply it into different uh, industry and get the buy-in from the industry uh, expert. Um, so, so that's the challenge, I think, uh, for the next um, few decades uh, for the uh, AI de development, yeah. Okay, uh, so, so let me summarize. Um, so AI is an area, is a very general area, um, including the technology which do not have any learning uh, algorithm, it also including machine learning, deep learning algorithm. And AI becomes so popular uh, because it is mainly because of the major breakthrough in deep learning technology in recent years. And AI is very closely related to data. So uh, without data, it is not possible uh, to develop a very good AI model. Um, and if one single lesson we learned uh, from the history of AI, and that is data is very important for AI development. Um, and so people, uh, so you can see in the past, we already have two uh, AI winters. So people may worry like, is there going to have another AI winter coming soon? Um, so what I want to see is things are quite different this time. So we have better hardware, we have big data, we have better algorithm and a lot of investment and comp big company and governments are all support this. And so I don't think there will be another AI winter coming, but I think the, uh, the hype won't be there forever. So actually in recent years, we can already feel right. Um, the, the, the interest, the investment on AI is starting to slow down. Okay, I, actually I think that is good um, because if one thing we learned from history is like <clears throat> um, every time when we have, uh, a super high expectation on AI, then there may have some uh, danger coming. Okay, so so in 2010, um, like from 2010 to 2020, that is the time I feel AI is almost at the hype after the deep learning uh, breakthrough. Um, every industry wants to apply AI and every industry uh, uh, think AI can help them to solve all the problems uh, they are having, uh, which is definitely not true, okay? AI definitely cannot solve all the problem. But uh, with the current uh, AI development, especially deep learning technology, uh, AI indeed can solve a lot of problems in almost uh, in every industry. So uh, I think uh, in next 10 or 20 years, we will see a lot of industry, uh, especially the traditional industry, not only those technology industry. Uh, in the past 10 years, it is the technology company, they are using AI, using deep learning. Um, but the next 10 to 20 years, I think um, AI should be, we, we, we will see AI being applied in many traditional industry. So that's why the case study I provided uh, is like the traditional industry, pizza selling, farming, um, hospital. Um, so, so that is the place where AI will uh, actually uh, make a big uh, influence uh, and some rev revolutionize uh, change. Okay, I, I want to I want to end uh, by showing you this Andrew Ahn's quote. Um, so we understand in many industry, especially traditional in industry, we don't have a giant data set. Okay, we don't have 1.5 million images. 
Okay, um, so, so for the traditional industry, I think the focus shouldn't be on big data, it should be on good data. Okay, so if you can, um, you can very thoughtfully um, uh, collect 50 very good image. Okay, so that may be enough to train a model to do some in image task for your own company. Um, okay, so that's why Andrew Ann also said, uh, in the last decade, the biggest shift in AI is everybody shifting to deep learning technology. So he think it's quite possible that in this decade, the, the, the next 10 years, the biggest shift will be data centric AI. So we, so everybody uh, come back to data, okay? Um, to try to get good data uh, and use the good data to train the AI model. Um, so instead of like, uh, trying to think about big data and all those fancy stuff. So we try to understand each traditional industry, uh, try to uh, try to utilize the domain knowledge you have in your respective industry to collect very good data. Okay, this data may not be big data, but these are very good data. Then we use those data to train the AI model. Then that model will be very helpful uh, for, for your own industry and solve your own problem. Okay, so uh, so that's, that's, that's all uh, from me. Um, for today's talk, uh, I just want to emphasize again, we are still at the narrow AI stage. And a lot of people are thinking we are going to generate AI or even aut fully autonomy AI. Um, for me, I think there's still a long way uh, to go. So for now, we are still at narrow AI stage. Basically, the, the model can only solve a very specific task. <laughs>